To start off, I sold a piece of wood to use as base. Wanted it to be like a round pin, so I smoothened it out with sandpaper. Found a petrol funnel to stick the pin through. Although I was going to use a half sold coke bottle, but why not use the funnel because it already had a grip on it. Then, I wanted to attach the ping pong ball to the pin. Was thinking of tape, but realized all too quick that it wouldn't be strong enough, so I went with super glue, which I was hoping would be waterproof as well. It was not strong enough to just glue the ball straight to the pin, so I cut a piece of plastic from a bag and tried to attach it to the pin with a nail, so I could glue the ball to the plastic. And yes, that is a pair of sheep share scissors. Obviously, the pin was too thin to hold a nail. I decided to use the tape instead. And here you can see the ball is attached to the pin and is stuck with the funnel. Remember that I told you I was worried if the glue was waterproof? Yes, it definitely was. It was so good that I had to use solvent naphtha to get the glue off my fingers. Here, I'm sealing the gap between the pin and the funnel with plastic by using tape. Now I'm filling the funnel with water as I want the ball to float and attach the camera to the end of the pin so I'll get really amazingly smooth and steady shots. I guess the world was not ready for that. So I quickly changed my mind. I felt I had invested too much time so I had to improvise for the greater cause. So I went back to the tape again, basically flipping my ideas upside down. Trying to make sure it's strong enough to resist at least a few kilos, like 3 kg, as the GoPro Hero 4 only weighs in at 93 grams, so it should be just fine. And as for a grip, I just sawed another piece of wood and attached it with tape. Literally, my ideas went upside down as you can see, as it was supposed to be the other way around. As for the mount, I used the medium long screw bolt which I attached to the pin with the red tape. Okay, so here we go. I'll let you decide for yourself what you think of my test runs. I said test runs, but it could have been just one, and that would have been me breaking my camera on the first run. By chance, the camera was not too far off the ground, as it fell in soft grass, thankfully. What happened was that my grip, which I attached with tape, decided to slip off. More is better, is that the saying? As you can see, I just kept modding in hope of improving steadiness as well as safety, adding two extra weights and a spring to use as handle. And this time I put the handle which is the spring together with a fishing line that's supposed to withstand at least 12 kilos. So without any doubt it should be just fine now. Here I go, ready or not. Is it me? Or does it look like things are getting worse? Now, this is just a horrible shot. And this one is even worse. The only decent shot is me going back in to plan my next move. Which was to flip my ideas upside down once again. So, here we go again. A little bit shaky still, but... I think that's mostly because of nervousness, that my Steadicam project was reaching its final end, but not in a favorable regard. But, right about here, I got a feeling that it was my turn, and the flow of the wind had changed. Made a minor mod, putting the weight up a little bit. So... I think... I think it's better now. More fixed, more balanced, not so shaky anymore. Who am I kidding? It's a complete calamity. I'm contemplating if I'm going to do one last try to get it right or just burn the F to the ground. I basically put the weight up as high as I could and pushed the spring up as well and taped as much as I could. And now it's the final countdown. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you, you can't get fooled again. Hang on, did I forget something? Mother of all living, I forgot to put the ISO. I left it on 400, which is perfect more or less for daylight. As for Steadicam evaluation, all I can say is to be continued another day or decade.